Hello indie game fan, so many great games in September, with Hidden Gems beginning with There Is No Light, a gorgeous grimmed up pixel art action adventure game that looks and plays great, being a polished and fun title that seems to have gone under the radar, so support this if you can. The very trippy looking Hyper Demon is certainly not for everyone, and does kind of melt your brain if you stare too long at it, but the spiritual successor to Devil Daggers from the same developer provides that same sort of pulse pounding action as you blast away at demons and try to survive as long as possible. According to the developer, this is not a sequel, even though it sure seems like it to me, with mechanics that require you to be more aggressive and some interesting advanced techniques that you need to master. If you were following along any sort of games media in September, you would have definitely come across Trombone Champ, the intentionally hilarious rhythm game that is unlike anything in the space. Firstly, it has a horizontal note highway where you're actually moving your cursor up and down rather than the more familiar Guitar Hero style of rhythm game where doing so corresponds to moving the slight tube part of the instrument where missing notes does result in some hilarious outcomes. It's wacky and weird and interesting, once again showcasing the innovation of indie developers. The controversial Ooblets also made it out of early access, being a very cute farming life sim title where you move to a new town, take over an abandoned farm and go about trying to help the mayor and residents with various tasks, with the ability to grow, harvest and capture these adorable creatures named Ooblets. The farming element is pretty basic but achieves its objectives, where it's more about capturing as many of these wonderful little creatures as you can, even having shiny equivalents which is always a delight. In addition to the main town, you're also able to go to different regions to find new ooblets and to complete new quests, all with a wonderful, charming vibe. A great success that I did not see coming was Road Warden, a text-based narrative RPG which has great pixel art, so listen on for some context. The truth is, nobody has what it takes to be the Road Warden. I patrol the paths, but I can't keep away every beast from the woods. I burn corpses, but some of them wake up too soon. I hunt down bandits. Sometimes we parley. Sure, I also carry messages and goods. You are the first person I don't have to lie to in years. And why do you want to become the road warrior? I love my JRPGs, which is why Jack Move got my attention in the first place, a stylish cyberpunk pixel art entry where you play as a hacker in search of her missing father. You are drawn into a dark web of intrigue, mystery and danger, running into all sorts of unsavory elements through the course of your mission. It is a simple, shorter one of these where you only control one character, but the equivalent of spells and abilities is neat, with a great look as well, making it for fans of the genre.
I really like Kaiji since this is an open world puzzle game where you need to decipher various clues, where different environmental objects have different meanings that you need to decipher, being kind of like the witness in that way. Things start off relatively slow but does get quite challenging, so it's a must get for puzzle game fans where the pixel art and relaxing music completes the package and I just love seeing puzzle games get some mainstream traction. Survival city builders have become a very popular subgenre, which was something that I did not see coming, but I suppose the challenge of having to survive for as long as you can, and the different strategies that you can try does lead to replayability, which explains why the Wandering Village is pretty popular. You're building on the back of a giant creature in a symbiotic relationship, having to take care of both it and your people. An interesting aspect is that as the creature travels through various biomes, you do need to adapt and change your colony to combat these negative effects, as well as fend off toxic weeds, parasites and more, with a tech tree that you can progress through, which does keep the game interesting. It has made a great first impression so far and I cannot wait to see what this will be like on the other side of early access. A classic top-down action roguelite of interest is Tiny Rogues, where it feels strange to say that this is a breath of fresh air since times have changed, where games like this were commonplace a couple of years ago, but we are now indonated with Vampire Survivor style Bullet Heaven games. What is old is new again since this instead spams enemy projectiles at you, similar to games like Enter the Gungeon with a nice variety of player characters and in-run upgrades as well. I'm not a fan of the fake CRT scan lines, but the gameplay and upgrades more than makes up for this. I've been a fan of developer Blobfish for quite a while, since their earlier games like Space Gladiators and Lost Potato were great entries in the roguelite space, but somehow the game that took off for them is Brotato, a bullet heaven roguelite which has done extremely well with a ton of variety, but I'm happy that this developer's persistence in making games has paid off with a look at more of the best here. 